So today we'll be making a really easy adapter for a point-and-shoot camera to allow you to use either a macro or a wide-angle lens. We made the original hole with a drill, but we kind of screwed up the cup that we're using to mate the lens to the camera. So we're just widening it out with a pair of safety scissors. This is a universal guide for any point-and-shoot camera, but once you make the hole, your adapter may not fit on all makes and models of point-and-shoot cameras. You should just be aware of that when you're cutting out and making your adapter. It's a really simple process. We're just trimming a little bit away at a time to try to get a snug fit over the lens of the camera right there. You don't want it too tight and you also don't want it too loose. Well, you're probably not going to hurt yourself on the scissors, make sure to be careful of any sharp plastic from your cuts. Now once it fits on, we're going to do a few things to make sure it's a little bit more snug and there's a better fit onto the camera. You can kind of see here the what the wide angle does to the shot. And that's what we're trying to take advantage of with the camera. Now we're using a lighter here to make the plastic more malleable so it's easier to fit onto the camera and get a nice tight snug fit. Be careful not to burn yourself either with the lighter or the hot plastic. We're just pushing the edge around the adapter down just so it's a tight fit and be careful when the lens comes in or the camera turns off. And this is a good cup. You want to look at this before you even start cutting Make sure your lens fits in there, it's a tight fit, it's not going to fall out. Now we're just looking for a sharpie so we can remove some of the excess plastic on the end of the cup. We're going to remove about half to a quarter inch, I'm not good with measurements. We're just going to cut a bunch of small slits, smaller and smaller slits on this cup until we can eventually bend one back and start removing the plastic on the end of the cup. Just shorten it up so that when you have the lens on the camera, you don't see the cup in your shot. Once again, it's really easy to cut this plastic with safety scissors and Again, be careful with that sharp plastic. It's really easy to make a sharp edge. So try not to cut yourself. Here you can see it's not perfect, but it should work. And be careful about that. Lenses can be fairly expensive. We got these at a yard sale, so they weren't that expensive, but still a lot harder to replace than the camera in some instances. So right now we're debating whether or not to try to move the lens closer to the camera. As you can see there's quite a, big of a, a bit of a gap there, but if you know anything about geometry you'll know that if we try to cut it down then the lens won't fit because it gets narrower and narrower the closer we get to the camera. So we realize about this point that we're not going to be able to move it closer. And here we're going to look at comparison. This is the normal shot. You can barely see the edges of the workbench. And once we install the wide angle or fisheye lens, you can see the entire workbench. So make sure you like, comment, and subscribe, and check out more helpful tutorials on this channel.